This is the story about this box. One day I went to a camera store in Amsterdam looking for this, a contact printer. And um, a contact printer is something that you can put a negative in and an empty sheet of paper, photographic paper, and then you hold it underneath um, the light of an enlarger and you can make a print from the negative onto the paper. This too is a contact printer. So I went into um, I went into the shop and they said we don't we are not sure if we have something like that but you can look on our attic and uh, see if you can find it and uh, so I went onto their attic and I found this and obviously easier to spot this one too and it also is a contact printer I removed the very scary uh, wires from it and this was the original entrance to the power and uh, there's a bit of the dirty wire left it's not even rubber there is it's cotton over copper and now it's good And these were the lamp fittings that were once in it. I worked on the wood, so uh, I made it shiny again. It was very dirty. But now it's good. This is still the original switch, which is very nice. It goes around and around. It's nice bucket light. Um, I'm not entirely sure if, it, if this is original, but it's the same size. and. These were two contacts live with 240 volts, 220 volts at the time. And um, um, you could make a darkroom clock connect the two and then switch on the lights inside. And there were two lights. There was a, a red light and a, and a white light in it, the red light for composing. And um, I decided to fit it with LEDs. This is the 3D lamp holder, nice and snug. But here's how it works. Um, this is a diffuser, it goes in here. It's the same size as uh, 13 by um, uh, 17 centimeters or five by seven photographic paper. On goes the negative. This is going to be a nice noisy video. And then um, on top of that, you can put paper, photographic paper. So a little bit like this. And then um, if you want to, you can also um, put something like this in between, which is um, a mask. If you want just a square from your photo. Anyways, um, it's nice and fiddly and, and complex. And then you can close the lid. It's uh, very springy and presses really hard. And it makes a contact between the two emulsions. And then you are supposed to shine a light through one. I have to show you that like this. So I'll remove this. That will make sense to have it now. Okay. So here we go. And then uh, you can turn on the lights like so, and you can make a print. So um, I was looking at darkroom clocks and I decided to make my own because frankly, darkroom clocks puzzle me because everything in photography works with exponents. Everything with, works with doublings. So you have shutter times, um, um, say your camera is 1 over 500, the fastest, and then next step is uh, 1 over 250, so it's double the time, 125, 60, etc. So um, why are darkroom clocks linear if everything is exponential? So I made an exponential darkroom clock. So this is two seconds of exposure. Next up, uh, if one light is uh, shining, this will be four seconds. One, two, three, four. 
and go. Thank you. Everything still works. I counted a little fast. It should be eight. Not only a noisy video, but also a boring video. Yeah, there. That was eight seconds. Um, so what if we want to do increments? Um, I'm not going to do seven seconds. That would be stupid. So say if I have the feeling that my um, exposure was two thirds of a stop over. So I go one, two, this is two thirds less. I don't care how long it is exactly, but here is eight seconds minus two thirds of a stop. So there we go. So this is my exponential darkroom clock, clock, but it feels very linear. It stops me from having to think. This is one stop less. Looks like this, very simple. And I can just rely on what I see and then react accordingly without having to think, which is an upshot. So the longest time, let me think. No, let me think for just for this video, just once, because it hurts. So two seconds, four, eight, uh, that would be 16, that would be 32. Um, so I have quite a range and then I have uh, the nominal time, uh, a third of a stop less, two thirds less. This is one stop less, one stop and a third, um, etc. So also the other way, so I can go two steps up and two stops down in increments of a third stop. Very easy. Um, intuitive and then you might think if you're a seasoned contact printer that you cannot uh, do um, any dodging on this but there is a slit here and um, maybe I can see it with more light there's a slit here and you can stick something through so I was thinking of making something that goes inside and can block light a bit, but to know where, um, there will also be a copy of it on top. So you move both at once, one copy here and one from the inside. Maybe that's how it works anyways. I don't know, I've never seen this a box like this, except for the one that I have. Um, also the light that I put in comes with filters. Currently I have, a, pinkish one on top of it and there's also an orangey one so maybe I can do a bit of contrast uh, handling I don't know I've never printed so this is me just thinking once and then experimenting later